Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today we have some socket board play. Have a little AM transmitter circuit here going. And we got some LEDs glowing, some batteries powering. What is this thing all about? If you watched my old channel 11 or 12 years ago, I tinkered with a 555 timer making an AM transmitter. But I was kind of thinking of using an audio amplifier this time. I think it might make a decent performing AM transmitter. So here's the basics of how this would work. Well, using the LM386, which is a single supply amplifier, meaning it has a supply voltage and ground, as opposed to like a hi-fi amplifier that might have a dual rail supply. You know, normally has a plus and a minus voltage in the common. But this just has a single supply. One attribute of a single supply amplifier, if you measure the voltage at its output pin before the capacitor, you'll notice that the idle voltage will be about one half the supply voltage. So if we had 9 volts supply, this voltage would be around 4.5 volts. Now for a multitude of reasons you don't want a DC voltage going through your speaker. So normally you add a capacitor between the output and the speaker that'll block the DC but allow the AC signal to pass on through the speaker. Now if you scoped the output before the capacitor it would look something like this. You have your idle voltage here at half the supply and if you put a signal on the input, it would vary around that one half supply voltage. So the most positive peaks would be close to the supply voltage, and the lowest peaks would be close to zero volts. It would have to work within the supply voltage rails. So now I'm thinking, why don't I connect a transistor to the output before the capacitor, and it would supply voltage to this transistor. I could input an RF signal carrier to the base of the transistor and at this collector I'd get the RF carrier signal out. Now keep in mind this is a simplified circuit. I'm not showing the coils and capacitors and everything. This is just for explanation. So now if I put a signal on the input it would cause this voltage to vary up and down between the supply voltage and zero. So now my carrier would increase and decrease with that signal. So at higher output signal voltages, the carrier would be larger, and as it approached zero voltage, it would be very small. So now that RF carrier signal is modulated with the signal that's being input to the amplifier. And that's called amplitude modulation because you know the signal is getting larger and getting smaller with our audio signal. And here is the schematic I've come up with. Jack CAD, now with balls. I put the little balls on each node here so you know that it's connected so people won't have to complain about it. So it's just a basic LM386 audio amplifier with a few additions. So take it from the top here. The input does have a filter. I don't want any of the RF from the rest of the circuit to come back to the input. It could cause an issue. On the power, I have an LED, which is an on-air indicator. So when this is powered up, it tells you that the uh, transmitter is turned on. On the output, I do have a speaker. It comes through this 10-ohm resistor and capacitor. It's a monitor speaker, so you can monitor the audio coming out of the amplifier. You don't have to have that. If you don't want that, you can take away this capacitor and the speaker, of course but you must leave the 10 ohm resistor and this capacitor. It's part of the Bougereau cell or snubber network as some people call it. And it too helps a little bit keeping RF from the amp and uh, stability of the amplifier. So like in the previous description, we tap off right at the output of the chip going through a 470 ohm resistor through an inductor capacitor and I'll explain how I selected those momentarily then down through the transistor over here is where the carrier frequency signal is injected into the circuit 
This should be a square wave because you'll get a 50% duty cycle here, which will work better with the circuit. If you use a sine wave because you have to meet that 0.6 volt base emitter diode junction drop, which can make the duty cycle less, it might uh, give you reduced power. It's just better to use a square wave here. The output will be a sine wave though, but I'd recommend using a square wave. So what kind of source, how do you generate this carrier frequency? You can do it many ways. You can use a function generator. You can use those little rectangle or square metal boxes, you know, have the four little pins on the bottom. They're crystal oscillators. In my case, I'm using a microcontroller. It has a pulse with modulated output. I checked the AM dial for open area and I decided to use one megahertz. I would encourage the use of a potentiometer here because as you adjust that up and down, it will have an effect on the output. And we'll take a look at that shortly. So next I had to take a look at the inductor and capacitor. How did I choose those values? So I started out with this ferrite bar antenna and this variable capacitor that came out of the same old radio. So I noticed that the old winding left the mark in the ferrite bar. So I wound on the same amount of turns, about the same distance apart, so I knew it would match up with the capacitor. So I connected them in parallel to form what's known as a tank circuit and added it to the circuit right here. So I can adjust this capacitor so this circuit is resonant. So now I connected that variable capacitor to the circuit and I'm going to tune it so I get a nice waveform. See, it doesn't look very nice there. So let me tune that to where I get a nice looking waveform. Here's the peak. There's a little bit of distortion here. Right around here, it looks like a nice sine wave. So after tuning the circuit, which I would do with the antenna connected, by the way, I disconnected these components, being careful not to change the setting I have here. So I measured its capacitance. I measured the inductance here using the little multi-component tester. And I substituted those components for small components of the same value. So now I needed to find the correct value of inductor to use. Well, in a box of electronics, somebody sent a bag of these CFL ballast, they don't look like they've ever been used. They're brand new. I wonder where they came from. But anyway, they have a little filter choke. Of course, when I desoldered it and tried it, the value was too high. So what I did is disconnect the lead here and unwind about half of the turns. It was about double the value I needed. And I scraped off the enamel and then uh, stuck one of the leads in the side and one of the pins and tuned it to the value I needed. So this little choke here fits the bill. So there's the choke and the capacitor. The capacitor turned out to be 220 picofarads and the chokes like 75 microhenries. And if you do the reactance formula for these, it comes out somewhere around 1 megahertz. Not exactly, because when you tune it, it'll be off just a little bit to get that nice sine wave. And there you see on the scope, you got the nice looking sine wave there. Now for generating the RF carrier, I'm just using a microcontroller. I programmed it to output 1 megahertz square wave signal. So that's really all I need to worry about. Now I need to adjust that output level to get a nice looking sine wave. So you can see here, there's a little range. See, it looks a little distorted there. But if I get it just right, I'll get a nice sine wave right about in this range here. So it'll be the minimal amount of distortion. 
So with the antenna connected, I'm getting a pretty nice signal here, about 2.4 volts RMS, or just shy of 7 volts peak to peak. So let me put a signal on there and see what it looks like. So now you can see the waveform modulating with the audio signal. So now I can adjust the scope and see the modulated carrier. And look at that. It doesn't look too bad at all, does it? This digital scope has that fake phosphor look to it, so it looks pretty nice. So now let's take a look at a 1 kilohertz test tone. Okay, I uh, wonder if there's a way I can trigger on this. I can set the scope up to trigger on this type of waveform. I can kind of clear it there, but I'll have to look real quick. So if I turn the signal up, you can see we're over-modulating, we're uh, clipping. We're clipping there and clipping here. So if I tune that down so there's no distortion, you can see we got a pretty nice modulation there. Well, I'm trying to uh, figure out how to trigger on such a type of signal. And it beats me. If you know in the comments, I can always just stop it so you can see what it looks like. Could stand to go up a little. I'm using my music player. See, this volume control steps are pretty coarse. So right about here, that's clipping. So yeah, that's as good as modulation as I can get. Which, I mean, it's pretty darn good, really. Well, put some music through the darn thing. Let's hear it. Well, one thing I noticed, when I have the scope connected, I get a lot of noise. I have a radio on sitting across the room. And if the camera picks it up, you can probably hear all that whine and noise. Now, when I unplug the scope, it's not nearly as bad. But anyhow... I don't know how long I can play that. Let's check out the range of this thing. I should mention that it's very important to connect this to earth ground, like a copper water pipe or something, this part of the circuit, and use a long wire antenna on this side, at least two meters long, if you want to get any sort of range out of the circuit. You can see when I connect the antenna, it loads down the output. Ideally, you'd want the output to decrease by about 50%, so that knows you got good matching. So I'm not really loading this down that much, but you know it'll work good enough. But if you want to get good range, you want to match it up with the proper antenna. Okay, so I'll use my beat-up Panasonic radio here. Unfortunately, the camera does cause interference it makes like a whining sound but I'll walk around with this thing YouTube safe music oh hello there how's the sicky doing what gotta wait for this to restart you can hear the whining sound So now I'm in the furthest part of the house, the room, which is diagonally across from where my bench is. And you can hear I'm still picking up the signal pretty well. Okay, well I'm back at the bench. My camera battery crapped out, so I'm tethered to the charger. 
Man, I really love these little Panasonic radios. They sound good. They got a little bass tone to them. They're just decent little radios. They're sensitive. Highly recommended. But anyway, a couple other notes on this circuit. As it stands, the circuit only draws about 12 milliamps with the RF turned on. So, you know, you can use it with those little square 9 volt batteries. Might use a little bit more if you add an oscillator circuit. But still, you know, it should be 9 volt battery friendly. Can I do anything to improve this circuit? Well, normally RF circuits, you'll have a RF choke in the collector circuit, and then you'll have, you know, series of coils and capacitors to tune the output, you know, clean up the harmonics and tune it for the antenna. And I might look at improving it that way. It'll be a little more complex. You know, I'd do away with this resistor here, or make it much smaller, and I could drive more power into this. Though, you know, you have to be careful you're not exceeding the FCC limit of, I think it's 200 feet. But I could do that, but, you know, this circuit's working pretty good. If I get a better antenna, match it up better with an antenna, i probably get pretty good distance. So, there you go. That wraps it up for this little project. Thanks for watching.